Oh, that should be clean now. G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here. I'm currently looking at my neighbor's bedroom window. Uh, it's an Airbnb, so presumably this is where the action happens. Now, clearly I'm creepy as hell, but am I doing anything illegal? These photons came in through my window, went into my telescope and into my camera. Am I breaking the law here? Can I break the law just by looking out of my window? Now you brought your new telescope home, right? You took it out of the box and the first thing you looked at was the moon. Yeah, sure it was. It would be naive to think that people don't turn the telescopes back on themselves. It's definitely creepy, but is it legal? Join me as I ruin my search history in order to answer that question for you. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Now, the laws are gonna be different for different countries. Uh, certainly they're different in Australia, but because most of you are watching from the United States, I'm gonna cover United States law. And for that, we need to go back to a Supreme Court case in 1967, Katz versus the United States. In this Supreme Court ruling, it was found that the police and the government had breached an illegal sports betters Fourth Amendment right against illegal search and seizure. They had taped him, his telephone conversation, while he was placing an illegal bet. Now, even though he was in the wrong, and even though they had a case against him, because they used this evidence, which they had attained by infringing on his Fourth Amendment right, the case was thrown out. Nowadays, it's totally legal to bet on sports, by the way. They had breached his reasonable expectation of privacy, and that phrase is important because it will be used throughout this video as I discuss the idea of looking at someone with a telescope. A reasonable expectation of privacy is when someone is in their home and they should assume that being in their home they have a right to privacy. The law that was broken in the FBI case in 1967 though wasn't really a right to privacy law, it was more that they'd breached his protection against illegal search and seizure. The implication though relates to government and the police. It's about state surveillance against a defendant and it means that the police can't break your privacy just to try and find out something you're doing wrong. They have to have evidence that you're doing something wrong first and then apply for a warrant before getting surveillance of any kind. Uh, they're allowed to look from the outside of your house. They can use their naked eyes to look at your house, but they can't use technology. Technologies like telescopes and illegal wiretaps and infrared thermal imaging cameras to look through your walls. In fact, this actually happened to a drug dealer who was detected growing marijuana inside his house, which probably lit up like a Christmas tree with all of those lights and power inside growing those plants. Uh, but because they got a warrant after the fact and not before when they suspected him of growing, that evidence was inadmissible and that case was thrown out. They had breached his Fourth Amendment right to protection against illegal search and seizure. But what about you sitting in your house with your telescope and your photons that came in through your window? Obviously the police aren't allowed to break your privacy without due cause, but what about you? The best example I could find about this was Arne Svensson in New York. The gallery exhibit here in New York City is raising a lot of eyebrows. It features photographs of people going about their daily lives, but some say those images are an invasion of privacy. They're snapshots of the most intimate and private moments, putting a sleeping child to bed, napping. The problem, the people in these pictures had no idea they were being photographed. <laughs> He'd actually used telescopic lenses to photograph his neighbors. Now he was in his house, but he was hiding in the shadows. His neighbors had no idea that they were being seen, let alone photographed. And he captured them in really candid private situations. Children, adults, various states of undress. They didn't give consent. And he not only took the images, he published and exhibited the images, which went far and wide even though no faces were visible. In this day and age, it's fairly easy to identify someone and some of these people were identified. Obviously, these people didn't like that very much and the case went to trial. The Forster family versus Fenson. They sued him on the grounds that he had infringed their right to privacy. Seems pretty straightforward, right? What do you think happened? Fairly reasonable expectation of privacy. How would you feel if your children were photographed in various states of undress through the windows? Well, surprisingly, the photographer won the case. Nobody's arguing that this isn't a creepy thing to do. I certainly would be distressed if it happened to me. The argument was made that the reasonable expectation for privacy only extended to rooms like the bathroom or the toilet. 
If a family is at a window, if you are at a window, you are actually exposing yourself to a public place, the street. And in the street, as many photographers on this channel will already know, it's a public place. You're allowed to take photography in a public place. There are certain stipulations about that around nudity and stuff like that. But essentially, if someone is visible in a public place, that's fair game. These photons came through a window, they're fair game. Disclaimer here, I'm not a lawyer. If you're doing creepy stuff with your gear, that's up to you, but check with your laws first. There are optical surveillance laws. However, I believe most of them protect the owner of the property. So if you're doing this sort of stuff from your property and looking out over other properties, I think that's okay. But just be careful. But I mean, if you take photos of someone in the bathroom or naked, uh, you're not gonna get the kind of protections that the photographer Svensson got in his case. There is a line that you shouldn't cross. And honestly, I think the line was way back. And honestly, if I was Aunt Svensson's neighbor, I probably wouldn't be so glib about it. You would think that you would have a reasonable expectation to privacy inside your house. But honestly, if the window's open, you don't. If I'm in a hotel, I'm constantly asking my wife to close the window and for good reason, this is why. Now, back when we were allowed to travel, I definitely took my telescope places, uh, particularly skyscrapers and tall buildings. And if you have a telescope or binoculars and you're sitting on a balcony on a tall building, it is interesting to look around the city, to look around at office workers in their offices, to see the cleaners at night going through empty buildings. But you do also see families sitting around eating dinner or watching TV and you may see someone's bathroom, but you obviously shouldn't linger on that sort of stuff. You shouldn't be recording. It is not nice. But interestingly, while you look over the city, you will find other telescopes. And I found other telescopes of various brands on balconies and through windows as well. It's not an uncommon use of a telescope for terrestrial human photography and for just looking out over the city. If you're in the city, you probably don't get a lot of actual astronomy done, not deep space astronomy because of the light pollution, but having a telescope on the balcony or somewhere where you can look out over the city, it's really interesting. Photographers will be well aware of the privacy and consent laws surrounding public places already. So what I've said in this video isn't surprising, but what you do need to understand whether or not you own a telescope is that when you're in a hotel room, if you don't have the blinds closed, you have no reasonable expectation of privacy. Trust me, my telescopes can see galaxies from millions, quintillions of kilometers away. It has no trouble resolving your penis at one kilometer. I can easily read stuff on your fridge from across the street. And that is something you should be aware of going into this brave new world where we have the technology that we do. Simply being on the other side of your window no longer constitutes a reasonable expectation of privacy. I hope you enjoyed this video. You've been watching Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.